Hello everyone, Totally YGO back here, and I'm here presenting my top 32 at the Rosemont Regional Snake Eye Fiendsmith deck profile. Not Rescue Ace, unfortunately, I wanted to play it, but I want to stick to what I was comfortable with, and I've been playing this deck for a long time, and it might be the last. I'm switching to a new deck, a uh, uh, little hint on what that's going to be. I really enjoy that deck. But I'm not going to waste too much time, because I spent a lot of time just yapping at the start of the video, the last deck profile. This time, I'm, I want to get right into it. But it's Snake Eye. It's not, nothing too complex. Most of it's pretty basic. I was doing pretty hot at the start of the tournament, I will say. I believe at the start of the tournament, I was 6-0 before I started losing. So I kind of cooked, not going to lie, for a 15-year-old. I think I did pretty easily. Let's begin. All right, let's let the camera settle down here for a bit. And we'll start with the best cards, you know, the Snake Eyes. Uh, we opened, we played three Snake Eye Ash, two Poplar, one Oak, one Flamberg. And I guess if you want to count as a Snake Eye 2, Snake Eye Dave Star. These are the correct ratios. I'm just going to flip it around just so you guys can see it a little bit better. But the Snake Eyes are undoubtedly the best part of the deck, you know, it's Snake Eye. But anyway, this is the correct ratio. There is no other ratio you should be playing. The second plan build is not ever going to come up. And honestly, like, this wasn't even like a super crazy card the whole day. There were some cute moments where I actually beat a Buster Lock with this card. That was like top tables, by the way. So, yeah, the Snake Eyes are very basic. These are the cards you have to play. All, just to remember, honestly, a third Poplar was like the only thing you could even change. I'd honestly rather play a third Poplar before a second plan build. Uh, another thing, more basic stuff, Triple Black Witch, uh, Triple Wanted. Don't forget this card can add Snake Eye Diabella Star. Uh, obviously, it's not like too relevant anymore since Snake Eye Ash at one. <laughs> Poplar at one. And I want to, and I will be making a post uh, banless Snake Eye deck profile. And I also want to talk about the banless in a separate video and how I think it will affect the game. As I'm a competitive player, but I'm not a professional player, so you know, maybe a little bit of both worlds. Uh, let's continue. Uh, more engine, or well, like not really engine, really bonfire. This is always the easiest engine card to side out because it plays really hard into Drill Knockwood. And before you say that's Cantrap's fake, it kind of is. But I also did get drilled on bonfire to. Yeah, what was it yesterday? No, it was Saturday. Wow. So I did get drilled on this, and it was very painful. I did have a lot of uh, starters, though. I had, like, Black Witch and Engraver in hand, even though the Engraver didn't do a lot. I had to go, like, Normal Ash and pitch the Engraver for Black Witch, and we still ended up getting, like, pretty much the full combo, I believe. It was into Branded, too. No Puppet Lock, by the way. That guy was so cool. I mean, it's all the way. 5 at the start of the tournament. Uh, these... Cards, obviously the pop lock so she has a black witch set uh amazing engine uh divine temple can do so much stuff i really like this card unfortunately it might be cuttable i mean not not put before uh rage of the abyss but like post rage of the abyss it might be cuttable since it's a brick which is unfortunate but it's just a really strong card in general because you can oh, excuse me uh there are so many lines you can go like play snake idea of all start to start and like immediately send it or place pop lock at the start as well because, like, even though it's a really strong card, it's also just not as strong. The only thing it's kind of helpful for is playing on DRNM, where you can keep your IP in the spell traps so instead of going draw phase, flame bear for it. And then, but, like, a lot of the time, it is totally okay to just, like, send it for free material just to play on hand traps better. Because, like, I'd go, like, if I open, like, Black Witch, three really good hand traps I don't want to throw away, plus Divine Temple, I'll go, like, Divine Temple, place Poplar, send Poplar immediately, and leave for Black Witch, and then go... Uh, send it again for OSS, and I can just go Ash, send the temple. That's it's like some really nice lines you were doing with that. So I definitely say Divine Temple is very good, but it's not like invaluable. The 1100 attack though comes up a lot though. A uh, triple engraver, and the one track, this, the one Lurie. Uh, obviously, again, the correct ratio, you need to play as many of this card as possible. It's super strong, it's a removal effect, comes up an unbelievable amount, equipping like a sequence as well to it, so it's untargetable while it sends something can come up. These guys were really helpful, especially in like breaking boards as well, because I remember I was like, I opened zero non-engine against a Ubel player, and I managed to break their board with just like, I think it was like Ash, oops, not Ash, it was like Ash, Track, Black Witch is how I broke the board, which was... I mean, to be fair, my opponent did misplay. Like, I went, uh, Anima, target the Apollosa, he changed Soul of Rage, which literally cleared half the disruption. Because it did eat the Anima, but then Apo gets the ruling, means Apo dies, and Soul of, and 
on it. Fuck. Little Knight just banished the Snake Eye Ash in my graveyard, so we really didn't get too much value. So, oh, he had like, she still had Belugris in an Implum set, so I still kind of had to fight for my life. I barely won that game. But yeah, Engravers are insane. Also, you need to, in the Runic Stun matchup, you really need to get as many of them on the field as possible so you can track, use them away with DSC Ray, and that's how you out some Floodgates with just Engine. Oh, speaking of, I w I'm gonna before I go to the non-engine, I I want you to keep in mind that my non-engine in was created with the mindset that me and my team, the people who are in my group, we thought and like we disclosed that we thought the 90% or at least a strong portion of the players here would be on two decks, Tempai and Runic Stun, and this ended up being pretty correct. There was a lot of Tempai out of my nine rounds. I played five Tempai players. Uh, my friend got played against four, and I think another one played against two. So yeah, Tempai was absolutely everywhere, and we would like right to respect it. Anyway, let's actually play the non-engine now. Uh, two talent, amazing card, but I actually don't think I even drew this. I think I drew this card maybe one time the whole tournament, and I don't think I even resolved it, because it just didn't activate a hand trap. Oh, the Bistials. The Bistials are crazy. They're amazing extenders as well. Like, you can throw sixes for Beatrice, which are really neat. They, like, Mag gets you more advantage. Jewel Swim's Ascend. And Baldric can literally, Baldric plus Nib can just go so crazy. I don't think I'd cut a single one of them. Like, I used to play, like, two Jewel Swim, but no, Baldric's, like, actually so good. There's, like, even a world where, like, I play, I don't even want to play Mag and I just want to play Baldric. I'm lying. Dude, there's no, that's stupid. This is, I'm so uh, the classics, three Imperm, three Valor, three Ash, three Ogre, and three Nib. If you know me personally, you'll know that I hate Ogre with a fiery passion. I believe it's called Butt. But, unfortunately, it did kind of pull its weight this tournament. Because, you know, a lot of Runic Stun, this card's actually really strong against Runic Stun. Because you can just, like, a lot of times they have, like, Gary Moon in it. In, in that late game, and if they're not, if you're not under the dimensional figure, they go like bounce and put back three, chain over, that shit hurts. Especially since they're usually under skill drain. Since, you know, they were drawing skill drain the whole time, even though skill drain is at one now, so. This deck's slightly weaker. I'll tell you how I feel about skill drain. And obviously, n knowing that the uh, decks I expect to see most were nit, sorry, were Tempai and Rune Sun, you might question why I decided to keep in Nib. I think Nib is just so good against every other deck. One deck I was a little afraid of was Ritual Beast. Ritual Beast is an extremely strong deck. Uh, Shifter is a crazy card, for example. Protos just skip my turn is crazy, and I really need to beat that deck. And a lot of these do are pretty good at beating Ritual Beast. Like this hits Inheritance, which they're not they're not always going for. But like even just like on the normal summon, you can just hit the Canahawk. That's like not that bad. Like they have like Nochi Draco it, I guess. Because like now they can't just make the Spiritual Beast. The uh, ulti spiritual beast can't hawk and get searches for free. They actually have to like bring it back, which is really inconvenient for them. Plus, uh, just stuff to stop Protos. Uh, just hit SBTL. Honestly, spiritual beast came along with Ash. Uh, only other thing you could consider was like maybe like the first Canna Hawk search, so they get don't get Wen or Laura, whatever. If they start with them paying you or Canna Hawk. Uh, it depends. But nothing too special about the non-engine overall. Just a lot of uh, just uh, meta gaming. That me and my friends were thinking of since you know last event of the dead format, so that's gonna be in the thumbnail. What? Uh, who actually? Uh, one anima. This is a you have to play this card. Uh, one nightmare phoenix. I really, really love this card. When I was theocrafting crafting my extra deck, I knew I needed to play this card. This card's amazing. It's really good against stun because you can go like this target like uh something up. You go like this target something. Chain Ogre to destroy your Nightmare Phoenix to dodge a skill drain. It's really sweet. I remember at one point I had like DSC Ray and then Nightmare Phoenix and I was breaking a Runic Stun board. Sorry, no, like they went first, but like they flipped a bunch of skill, they flipped shit in my draw phase. So I had to like link two for a DSC Ray and then I like beat, and I went like DSC Ray, send skill drain and Nightmare Phoenix, uh, pop the, what's it called? Uh, the fountain since he had Gary in his spell trap because I think he was had a moderate water and wanted to go for Baguska but just didn't do it. Oh right. No yeah he didn't go for it. Uh next uh Hida. Hida's amazing. Honestly I don't think she ever came up. The only time 
she comes up is in your runic stun end board which i didn't i only tested against runic stun i didn't actually play against it some of my friends did but she is actually a part of the runic stun end board because not because she's good for it but because you don't want to end on nightmare phoenix because you want it to on the follow-up a uh, little tip bit here i'm the best and if you, anyone ever wants to play this woman again, the best end board you can make was a 3 mat access code talker made with IP Mascarena, Distance Spell Trap Zone, uh, Hita, since you want to save your Phoenix for next turn because you're Promethean Engrave, and then finally Flamberg. Like, the only thing that, like, really cooks this is, like, a Sphere Mode. Like, if you know against Unix, you were against Unix Sun, this end board literally had, like, I believe a 100% win rate. Because this just beat everything. If you, I think it's better than Magic Deflect. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. DC Ray was also right here. Uh, that's not DC Ray. So yeah, this. Then I put away the Flamebear, but like Flamebear would be there too. This this endboard had a hundred percent win rate against Gunnick Stun. Because you don't have to like struggle your way to access code, and like they have to like burn freezing curses on it and stuff. But like you already have like DC Ray protect your stuff. It's just so strong. This endboard is really good. Uh, yeah, uh, IP, SP, not much to say about these cards, honestly. They did exactly what you usually do with them. Uh, nothing really interesting ever came out. I think at one point I summoned back Promethean first and I IP'd into a Nightmare Phoenix, which was kind of cute. But apart from that, nothing really happened. Uh, Promethean, I don't need to explain why this card's amazing. This card's really strong. Uh, next we play Selene. Selene comes up a lot in just the awkward lines where you want to just... Uh, the thing is, like... You can sometimes you go through like your Louie, then you go like Louie into Anima and just like make Celine with that. And then Celine can summon Axe through a quick access coach just so eating the board. Or just Apollosa. Like this code's really good in the Snake Eye Ash player on Nib combo. Which I reason I did not get top eight was because I fucked up the line in because I didn't want to time stall my opponent and I had like two minutes left in the round. So I had one less body and then I on Promethean on my field and he drop A's input my apple so I had literally zero disruptions. He activates him SETI. I no wait, he activates uh I think it was yeah he activates him SETI then just immediately activates King Salt right after after I hash it. So, man that, that was a terrible loss. Like if you were there and you know me, I was devastated. I couldn't even play my last, I barely played my last round because of that. It just hurt so bad. Other than Apo, it's like the entire end board. She's banned now. Rest in pepperoni. We'll see what we do without her. Triple firewall bounce. It's not gonna happen. Uh, then finally, Fiendsmith. Uh, before I was not on DSUA, like I, I topped an OTS championship with him, but like what, pretty much right after I cut DSUA because I felt like he didn't come up enough. He came up a lot this tournament. I'm very happy I put him back in, but a lot of time I was getting too greedy with making DSUA. Because, like, my biggest problem with DSUA is that he's so high commitment, and the fact that you don't usually use your Engraver Summon back if you do use him. So that's a little unfortunate. But yeah, everything else, like, came up. I think uh, Beatrice came up today, so yeah, she definitely was worth playing. She's banned now. Can you believe this, this many ban? We play, like, literally, like, almost every ban card, not named Calamity. So many ban cards. Rest in peace. They're all dead. 45 days with Lacrima before he died. Let's get to screw this card. The time, the time shenanigans, just disgusting. Oh uh, yeah, don't forget Requiem gave 600 attack. Really helps. Don't forget sequence makes your stuff untargetable. Uh, don't forget DCUA is like how you're always beating. It's really good at beating Runic Sun because like if you go first, sorry, if you go second, you're just trying to like turbo. You're just trying to go like bodies into Moon into Requiem and just keep cycling your Requiem over and over and then Engravers keep summoning back until you can track this fuse for DSUA and then go then somehow lose the DSUA to send a floodgate. I mean, if they ha and usually since you're under skill drain and stuff, Moon and stuff doesn't really matter. It's also like is really decent against rivalry as well. So it, it does beat rivalry, which is super sweet. Uh, unfortunately, your best way to beat rivalry is probably just like to lock yourself into lights. And then if you don't, then just try to like tribute summon to Beerus and stuff. That's unironically the call. It's so gross. Uh, next, uh, next and finally, we're gonna go to the extra deck. Sorry, the side deck. Uh, I did honestly. I might as well not side at all today because I think I saw my side cards like one, two times at max. Uh, triple Chummy, is, like the best draw card in the deck. But I also played double Phantasma. Uh, I love Phantasma in testing. He came up so much. His targeting protection was amazing. Uh, you could draw it off Chummy. You don't want to play three because it's a hard one. So it's one like Chummy, which is not. So you can go drop a double Chummy. I never did that. I think I Chummied my opponent like maybe one time. 
But yeah, very strong draw cards. I think I drew Chummy one time this tournament, and I didn't draw the rest a single time, so. Unfortunate. Uh, I mean, we still got a test, though. Uh, Triple Ghost Sister Spooky Dog. Well, this is a card I wasn't playing the entire format, but it's pretty necessary, to be honest, since you're just losing time so hard. Also, I did play a game against Gimmick Puppet, and I remember drawing my cards like, please, Dogwood, 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 no dog. I still opened, like, a decent amount of hand traps, but he had mana, and he had, like, the Terror Baby, so I can't respond to the Imperm, the thing that searches the rank up spell on summon, but he just made another one with the Horus card, so it was kind of jobber. Thankfully, he was pretty bad at his deck, so I was able to squeak my way out of a win. No hate to you if you know me, by the way. You were a ch super chill guy. Uh, triple triple Cosmic, and uh, I played Duster too. Since again, Runic Stun and Tempai were my big fears this tournament, but yeah, I really wanted to make sure to beat those. Was, uh, this is really how just Cosmic in one thing is always the difference between if you win or not. Since they really just need every floodgate they can get to win. And also, before it's like, I know Runic Sun feels like a deck that's like literally impossible to beat. That deck really, really, really needs to draw its floodgates. Because it really struggles to do so. Since like, what? Think about it. They play like Rivalry, Gozen, like one or two Synchro Zone, uh, Triple Skill Drain at the time. Now it's like gonna be like the Philosopher's Stone card. It's like almost Skill Drain. Yeah, so pretty much, like, you can beat, if you just hit, like, one floodgate, you can do a lot. And by the way, like, if they activate desires, that's usually with Ashing, by the way. Because, like, just pray they hit that double fountain. Yeah, all these came up. Uh, I think I drew Cosmic one time today as well. I, yeah, but did I draw Duster today? I don't think I drew Duster today. But I had Cosmic against a Tempai player, because I believe he was on the the trap card so i was trying to play around it and at one point i i was playing around that and rivalry but i knew i was most scared of rivalry so i just kind of had to hold the cosmic for rivalry but like he missed so many chances to activate the trap and rivalry so at one point i just cosmic and i'm like it's what the hell is it, and it was just kind of just sitting there it was so weird because he could have added the trap and yes he told me he played the trap after i'm not i'm not insane trust me guys please uh then finally Triple Skill Drain. Uh, I played this in my last topping deck profile of an OTS championship, and I quickly switched to Angel of Blue Tears because it's just insane. I want a lot of locals off that card. But realistically, like, that doesn't really hurt Rogue. And another deck, again, I'm scared of Ritual Beast. And, like, Skill Drain isn't, like, super crazy against RB. I'm going to be able to since they just dodge it really easy. But it's still, like, really strong. It's still just an immediate win card, unlike something like Angel of Blue Tears. Which can be like this, not this, but D Crow. It never, that never came up in testing, but still, I, Skill Drain is just such an instant win card. Amazing card. Like, even if you just sit on a 3k plan build, it's, it's amazing. It's called so good. And yeah, that's that's the deck profile, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Maybe you didn't. Honestly, it was a pretty basic list. It was mostly just metagaming. Like, honestly, I think the most interesting part of this was like side deck. Uh, I did just go uh, 4 0. Yeah, Rick. Yeah, it was yesterday with Ritual Beast. If you want to see that deck profile, I'd be happy to oblige. But for now, I think I'm going to be bidding you guys farewell. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time, I suppose. Huh? Totally YGO, out.